Welcome back to another study of God's Word. Today's lesson is going to be about leadership. That's right, leadership. We've had a lot of discussions recently about leadership in our nation, uh, in our homes, and in our communities. We want good leadership. So what does leadership look like? Now, we're familiar with what leaders look like. If we've read the Bible, we can see individuals such as David, or we can read about Joshua or Moses. And there's many examples of good leaders in our Bible, and most importantly, it's God. But God also came in the flesh in his son, Jesus Christ, and taught us what good leadership looks like. It's the best leadership that we can have. It's the biblical model of leadership. That leadership was taught and demonstrated by Jesus Christ. You see, Jesus not only showed us what leaders look like, but he also taught what leaders look like. I'll tell you, a good book that, that I've read before on leadership is Robert Quinn's book. It's called Building the Bridge as You Walk on It. The analogy he gives is that as leaders, we're the first ones to build that bridge uh, so that others can follow uh, to the other side. And that's what Jesus taught. He taught us the correct model by leading. The Bible is quite vocal about leadership. The biblical model of leadership is called shepherding. The model of leadership is the model of the shepherd and his flock. Jesus is going to discuss that in John chapter 10, which we're going to look at today in our lesson. But also know this, that this term of shepherding is mentioned over 500 times in your Bible. It's the description and the model that we should all have. Just think of one of the most common verses that we all know, Psalm 23. It's centered around this biblical leadership of a shepherd leading a flock, God leading us. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Think about that particular psalm. Also, Isaiah chapter 40 and verse 11 says, Like a shepherd, he will tend his flock. In his arm, he will gather the lambs and carry them in his bosom. He will gently lead the nursing ewes. Christ Jesus is our chief shepherd, as he's going to line out in the scriptures. But he also taught that his followers and certain people who have been called are to be shepherds of the flock. In some churches, we call them elders. Some churches call them shepherds. But the title is not as important as what their role and responsibility is within the church. Paul exhorted the shepherds in Ephesus in Acts chapter 20 and verse 28. And in it, he says, be on guard for yourselves and for the flock among which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers to shepherd the church of God, which he purchased with his own blood. You know, in our modern way of thinking, it's kind of hard to describe or even think about the shepherd sheep model. Our typical idea of leadership is a CEO or a business type of model of leadership, where they're sitting in an office and dictating what everybody else in their employees should be doing. But they have power, they have authority, and they use that power and authority to get things done for the bottom line, and their bottom line is, whether it be power or money or different things of the world. So we tend to think of leadership in the wrong way, where the Bible describes leadership in terms of being a shepherd. You see, this shepherd is leading his flock. His flock know his voice. He lives among his flock. He defends the flock of sheep. He protects them from all of these the wolves or the thieves or other predators that might come in and try to destroy them. He feeds them. And because he feeds them, he cares for them. He sleeps with them. He knows them. And they know him and they know his voice. And as soon as he calls out, as we can see in the video, all the sheep start running to the leader. That's the kind of shepherd that we have in Christ. That when he calls our voices, we should be running to him. And we should be thankful when we have shepherds who are leading in a biblical model. Spiritual leadership for us today should be designed around the shepherd and the flock. Because the shepherd cares for the sheep, because he lives with them, he sleeps with them, he 
smells like them. Lynn Anderson wrote a book about shepherding uh, that says they smell like sheep. The book is talking about what shepherds should do and how they should lead, particularly elders or anybody who's a shepherd, really. And his whole idea of smelling like sheep is that they live among them, so they're going to smell like them. As I said before, Jesus is our chief shepherd. And Jesus gave a very good example of what shepherding looks like. In the ninth chapter of John, there's a man who has been born blind. Jesus heals him. And because Jesus healed him, it made the Pharisees and other leaders mad. So mad that the Pharisees and those who were supposed to be shepherding this individual went to his house and made him and his family renounce Jesus to such an extent that they tried to intimidate the man's own family to renounce Jesus to the point where they were afraid to be kicked out of the synagogue or kicked out of the church because they were proclaiming that Jesus had healed him, which leads up to John chapter 10. And I'm going to read those verses for you. Jesus gave a parable about the good shepherd in John chapter 10 to give an example for us and especially for the Pharisees of the time of what bad leadership looks like and what good leadership looks like. Truly, truly, I say to you, he who does not enter by the door into the fold of the sheep, but climbs up some other way, he's a thief and he's a robber. But he who enters by the door is a shepherd of the sheep. To him, the doorkeeper opens and the sheep hear his voice and he calls his own sheep by name and he leads them out. When he puts forth all of his own, he goes ahead of them and the sheep follow him because they know his voice. A stranger they simply will not follow, but will flee from him, because they do not know the voice of strangers. The figure of speech Jesus spoke to them, but they did not understand what those things were which he had been saying to them. So Jesus said to them again, Truly, truly, I say to you, I am the door of the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. I am the door. If anyone enters through me, he will be saved and will go in and out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have a life and have it abundantly. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays his life down for his sheep. He who is a hired hand and not a shepherd, who is not the owner of the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and flees. And the wolf snatches them and scatters them. He flees because he is a hired hand and is not concerned about the sheep. I am the good shepherd and I know my own and my own know me. Even as the father knows me and I know the father and I lay down my life for the sheep. So Jesus is describing himself as the good shepherd who cares for his flock and gives them life and gives them sustenance and gives them abundance. And that's exactly what Jesus does for you. Jesus is your chief shepherd. He cares for you. He loves you. He has compassion for you. He's going to do whatever he can to help you because he loves you so much. But Jesus goes on to describe this model of leadership to his disciples. Later on in the 21st chapter of John, Jesus is going to have a discussion with Peter. And in that discussion, it's about love. There's a play on the Greek word agape and phileo. And it's there's a lot hidden in there. You probably wouldn't pick that up on your normal translations. But in the midst of that, Jesus says, tend my sheep. Jesus says, shepherd the flock. So Jesus is calling Peter now that he is about to leave, be resurrected and sit at the right hand of God, that now Peter and the rest of his disciples are going to have to learn to shepherd, to care for the sheep. That made such an impact on Peter that later on in 1 Peter chapter 5, he is now exhorting other fellow elders, other fellow shepherds, the same exhortation that Jesus gave him in 1 Peter chapter 5. It says, therefore, I exhort the elders among you as your fellow elder and witness of the sufferings of Christ and a partaker also of the glory that is to be revealed. Shepherd the flock of God among you. Exercise oversight, not under compulsion, but voluntarily according to the will of God 
and not for sorbid gain, but with eagerness, not yet as lording it over those allotted to your charge, but proving and providing to be examples to the flock. And when the chief shepherd appears, you will receive the unfading crown of glory. So it goes back to what I said in the beginning, that shepherds first and foremost are examples. They lead by their example. So we should try to follow them because they care for us. So what are some characteristics of leaders? Number one, they have followers. Okay? Leaders are already leaders. If you want to find a good leader, then see who's already following an individual. They already are, have built in a flock because they've been leading by example and they care for others. Others are going to listen to them and they're going to follow them. The second thing we can find from good leadership is availability. A leader is always available to his flock. He's always available to the church. His doors are open to listen and counsel whoever needs it. Also, commitment. Leaders are committed to the church. They are committed to Christ, and you can see that in their lives, that the most important thing for them is their church. And also, trust. You can trust a good leader. You can trust them because they have proven their loyalty towards their flock. They have proven that they love them. We should all count our blessings because Christ Jesus is our ultimate shepherd. But we should also bless and thank those who are elders. Try to follow them because no matter what happens, they're there to help you through any difficulty you may be going through. And we need to lean upon them and look to them. And when we look for other leaders or maybe look in the world, we need to see those who are leading by example and those who are leading because they care and provide loyalty towards others. May God bless.